Hey guys, I'm back um, with Harvesting of Chemical Energies and we're going to be talking about cellular respiration in the next couple of uh, videos. But we're going to start out by talking about energy and how energy is transferred through catabolic pathways. Now when we talk about the harvesting of energy, we usually talk about it either as fermentation, which is the harvesting of energy anaerobically or with oxygen not present, and cellular respiration, which you should be familiar with the cellular respiration equation, which is glucose and oxygen goes to carbon dioxide, water, and energy and heat. Um, the cellular respiration, if you remember, is when oxygen is present. Now, let me talk a little bit about how and where this energy is stored. You know, glucose is the model we're talking about, and whenever it is cat catabolized or broken down, it reduces or produces ATB. Now, if you look down here in this equation, you know, you have your glucose molecule plus oxygen makes energy, water, carbon dioxide, and some heat's going to be re released. Now, I kind of think of it as up here in the upper left-hand corner, combustion. You know, whenever we set something on fire, if you got your fuel, you add oxygen and a little bit of spark, then it starts to burn and it releases carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Well, respiration is exactly the same thing in which you have your fuel, which is your glucose molecule, your carbohydrate. You add a little bit of spark, an ATP. You add enzymes and oxygen, and it creates more ATP, which and oftentimes it releases carbon dioxide and water. So respiration and combustion are very similar in how they, how they occur. They both occur most effectively when oxygen is present, of course. Now, how do we harvest energy from the fuels that we eat? You know, where do we get these fuels from? We get them from the things we eat, right? So how, where do we harvest these fuels from? We do this by moving electrons. And as electrons move, they carry energy. And that energy can either be used to make new bonds, it can be used to release heat, it can be released as heat, or it can be used to harvest as ATP. Now, so if I had these two macromolecules down here at the bottom, and we were to move an electron from the yellow one to the blue one, the yellow one would be losing an electron, the blue one would be gaining an electron, and what, what's going to happen is the one that loses an electron actually becomes more positive, and the one that gains an electron actually becomes more negative. Now, when you gain, excuse me, when you lose an electron, you're said to be oxidized, and when you gain an electron, you're said to be reduced because of the negative number, right? And that's called oxidation and reduction, and that's really what this video is about. Now, the unique thing about oxidation and reduction is that you never see one without the other. They're kind of like yin and yang. Um, so when you see oxidation and reduction, sometimes they are referred to as a redox reaction. A redox reaction is a reduction and an oxidation reaction. They always occur simultaneously. To give you an example, if you look here, electrons don't move by themselves, so they need to have some kind um, of carrier. And hydrogen is often the carrier in most reactions. And, and if you look at the equation at the bottom, you got glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. If you notice here, glucose actually gives up a hydrogen. Right, it gives up hydrogen, so it's being oxidized. It's giving up an electron, and water. Actually, I mean, oxygen actually accepts the hydrogen, an electron, so it's being reduced. If you notice in the equation, glucose goes to carbon dioxide. It loses its hydrogen. It loses its electron, so it's oxidized. Oxygen goes to water, so it gains hydrogens. It's actually being reduced. All right. Now, so here's just a summary of what I, what I said about oxidation and reduction. Oxidation, you add oxygen, you remove hydrogens, which is basically removing electrons. This releases energy, and these reactions are said to be exergonic. They actually give off heat. A reduction reaction is whenever you're removing oxygen, you're adding electrons or hydrogen, you're storing energy, and this is called endergonic or adding heat. All right. Now, one last thing I want to mention about this is that what moves electrons in respiration in particular is, is an electron carrier is called NAD and BAD. NAD, whenever it gains an electron or has been reduced, is called NADH. BAD, whenever it gains electrons, it is called FADH2. Now, you'll also become familiar in later videos on NADP and NADPH, which is actually NADP is an electron carrier in photosynthesis. Anyway, I hope this has given you a brief overview of 
um, the redox reactions, and I will see you soon.